subscribe to my YouTube channel and click the bell icon for the latest film interviews, features and recommendations on the movies that matter. Ladies, gentlemen, folks, uh, I want to start by saying congratulations. Um, you have this new anthology that's that's going to be out soon on Amazon Prime Video. This is Putham Pudu Kalai, um, which of course which of course means a new dawn. Did I do okay with that pronunciation? Okay, I, I, I've been Kale. struggling with it. Kale. Kale. Okay, okay. You know, I think it's very interesting that it's the second anthology of Tamil films that's been announced in one week. Uh, it's it's very telling of just how seriously the streamers um, are taking, you know, Tamil cinema and non-Hindi cinema. Um, this is, of course, an anthology of five films. Each of you directed a roughly 20 to 25 minute short. Um, and each of these films were, of course, directed during lockdown, during the pandemic. And you've written the pandemic and written lockdown into each of your stories. I want to start by asking you, what was the pitch that sold each of you? So uh, when Charlie and Aparna spoke to me, they spoke uh, about doing it in lockdown, which is uh, actually a section 144 kind of films, uh, where you had just 10 people on sets, crew and cast included, and you had only five or six of them on set and the others off set. So, uh, and then they, they started talking about new beginnings and chances and uh, new chances and everything, which in itself, at that point, I think this was in May, we were like really, really down. March, April, May had passed and there was, uh, I think, I think if they had told me to shoot it with two people, I would have jumped in because I was really dying to do work then. And what really sold, uh, sold to me, the concept was that you shoot, see, even in the case of a pandemic, you cannot keep creativity down. That's what they said. And let's put it out there, out to the world to see that we just cannot keep our spirits down just because there is something bad happening there. And that excited me and the fact that we had to go back to student days and you know my husband was the driver, my daughter was holding umbrella for Nikkei and we had uh, film rain, prop rain and the prop rain was done by cycle pumps. It was, it was just hectic and I just enjoyed it so much. So that was the reason. Um, I think the call came in and then um, um, Reshma, the writer of Queen and my partner, so we discussed the idea. And then she said, there's something that I have, um, you know, in my head and do you think I can just write it? I said, yeah, write it. And if, obviously it'd be nice and I'd love to read it and all that stuff. So three days she turned around the script and I went in mainly only because of the content. I really liked it. Um, it's between uh, two people, um, you know, who are meeting up after a long time. And that's what, uh, uh, you know, the genre itself was, was about new beginnings and hope mm. and everything had to be positive and all that stuff. So. Uh, I jumped in mainly because of the content and uh, uh, the, the bulb that sort of went off in my head was, uh, can this be an opportunity for work to me, for me to work with somebody like a PC Sri Ram sir? So I, I just, you know, called him and we met during the pandemic uh, with masks and properly and all that stuff. And he was very gung ho about it right from the word go. So I think the content and the opportunity to work with uh, PC sir and obviously to put something out on, um, you know, Amazon really worked for me. So that's why I jumped at it. Yeah. Karthik? Yeah, yeah, like, uh, uh, as Sudam, um, Sudam um, said, uh, we were all like, I was personally like really frustrated with all this lockdown and being at home and all that. So when they actually said, okay, we're going to make a film, I, uh, there was nothing, no question about it. I just said, okay. And then, I mean, I was obviously immediately on the project. Then I thought of a concept. Uh, they said that it should be uh, about some new beginnings and hope and all that. So mm -hmm. then uh, I had uh, I had like two ideas, but then I, I felt, okay, I should do something that is more, uh, uh, what to say, more uh, positive and more uh, uh, comical. I mean, I, I want to try something in comedy. So I just mm -hmm. thought, okay, this will be a right time. And, and Sasri? Uh, you know, Rajiv, I've moved on from filmmaking to so many other yeah. things because I'm super senior to all of them. So from acting, from cinematography to filmmaking and to be a co-producer in Madras Talkies, I had moved on to, uh, you know, starting an NGO and looking at, uh, you know, destitute women and things like that. But when the pandemic was announced, uh, I, I, I got a bit restless, mm -hmm. not too restless like they are saying. I got a bit restless and I thought, how many people will be as restless or as worried like me because suddenly the world has come to a standstill. So what I did was on Instagram, I did 21 days of lockdown and I had every day I had taken up a theme and, uh, you know, uh, like 
I, I finished those 21 days. After I finished those 21 days, I had nothing to do. But the lockdown continued. I didn't want to start these live shows again. And I narrated a story to Mani and I said, I want to shoot it on my uh, iPhone. So he said, why are you doing a dark film? It should be about hope. So I turned a dark film, uh, a story by Indumati into a, uh, a kind of a bright uh, story, which uh, Gautam alone has seen it in this group. I don't think anybody else has seen it. Gautam has seen it. And uh, I got all the technical tips from Raji Menon. So I asked him, like, how do I record sound? And what is the ratio? And how many frames should I do? And what software should I download for my, uh, uh, you know, for, for my camera and all that? And then I, I shot it. And then I realized I was acting in it. And my watchman was taking the shots. <laughs> you know, it was like that. But the film was complete. And I showed it to Chalini and Aparna. And they liked it. And they said, we have a concept of new hope, a new beginning. But it cannot be on an iPhone. Uh, it has to be properly shot. And at, at, at that time, we were really in the middle of the lockdown. And I said, mm. how do we even think of shooting? She said, no, it's not immediately, but uh, you know, we are considering. I think that's when they approached all the four, four other people and they all agreed. And they finally came to me and said, uh, will you do it? So I'd already shot with my iPhone. So I was kind of ready to do a script. Uh, uh, Karthik, again, I have to tell you, I had two scripts. And uh, the one had similarity to your story. So uh, Shalini said, it's, he's doing, then Mani said, just stop it. Okay. If he's got a similar story, he's definitely going to do it better than you. So <laughs> why are you even experimenting? You better do something that you will be comfortable in your, within your comfort zone. I, I, I still think I should have done it because after uh, Shalini read my script and she said, no, it's different from, slightly different from uh, Karthik. But again, Mani said, don't even try to go where <laughs> Karthik is going. So you better do something else. That is when I did the script of Coffee Anyone, you know, in Tamil it's Coffee Venema, right. you know, right. Coffee Venema and uh, Rajiv, you and I have a lot of association with coffee, how important coffee is for South Indians and a family itself kind of comes together mm. with coffee, you know, memories and uh, there is a lot of nostalgia about coffee and uh, there's one, one central character who collects all of them together in terms of coffee. Only now we talk about youngsters, uh, you know, calling the others, uh, saying, let's have coffee. But it was not a kind of concept about 20 years ago. So coffee was my concept and family was my concept. And like uh, Gautam said, I just wrote it in three days. Right. I just wrote it in three days and money threw it away. He said, it's not good. So I waited for him to say it's good. So after three days, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing changed, but he said it's good. And after that, I started shooting. <laughs> so Sudha knows about it. How he says it's not good in the beginning. <laughs> That's how this group was made. Yeah. That's it for you. Uh, during the pandemic, you know, you find a lot of changes happening. I mean, I, I was in touch with a lot of people I had not been in touch with in advertising. And you're just trying to say, how are you? How are you? You know, you're sending a message. And then you discover some people have gone to Bombay and they've got stuck there. And they're not able to fly back because it was there. And they're trying to meet other friends. And, and, and people stayed for like 45 days, 50 days, just because they were stuck in Bombay for something and they couldn't actually get on that flight back. So I was kind of fascinated by what, what all had happened. I mean, you are stuck inside. But when there is a lot of people in Indian families who are used to domestic help and, you know, helping, especially people who are, uh, physically invalid and things like that. They, they're used to that. And then suddenly you are mistrusting everybody. You think everybody is going to bring in an infection. And there is a, a great deal of, um, can I say, um, loneliness, but also dependence. And if you put complete three strangers together who some way were connected and how do they ignite uh, lost uh, contact, you know, in that sense. And how do, and, and, and if somebody's dealing with a kind of a personal problem also through that. So it's like drama, but it's got elements of romance and uh, family and, you know, various relationships, but actually put together in a space. So I mean, the space was really important and, you know, right. feeling constricted. But it just so happened that I found a place with a large courtyard and how they actually feel boxed in inside that space and then still have hope. I think you're coping with the, with the COVID, but you know, the idea of having hope amongst uh, that coping and new friendships and things like that. Uh, 
That's what you know, it's interesting. You say, it's it's very interesting you say that, Rajiv, because I had a chance to watch the film yesterday. I saw all five films, and they're and they're really lovely. And I feel like this is the right time for this film because it is really so um, life affirming and reassuring, which which is really what I think that we could do with at a time like this. Um, you know, they're they're uplifting stories, or they're warm and fuzzy. They're hopeful. All of them are hopeful. There's obviously a very deliberate and conscious attempt to um, to uplift spirits. What I what I want to ask is, you know, um, that's the that's the intention. That's that's what you want to do with the films. Um, but you're also coping with the reality of, um, you know, of of the pandemic while you're making this film. Was it, um, you know, was it hard to get a cast and crew excited? I mean, you know, Sudha said and Gautam said and all of you said that uh, you were you were in a in a sense, you know, wanting raring to go out and work because because it was boring to be at, to be locked indoors. But um, but what what was the actual um, you know, what was it actually like? I mean, you know, actually be, you know, working at a time when this threat is sort of looming over your heads. My uh, story involved two senior citizens, both above 75. Okay. Correct. And uh, I was planning to cast my father, but just a week or 15 days earlier, I was not sure if he'll be able to do it also because he's a little older than the character that I had written, but he fell down and broke his collarbone. So he was not able to act. So I approached two other actors one actor refused to even talk to me because he was so scared about shooting. The other actor listened to the script and said that, you know, I've had a bypass surgery, so I'm not sure. So, I mean, you're stuck. You, I mean, for a director, it's like whether you, you want to be human and, you know, look at this or you just have to get your film done. I mean, your film does need somebody who's above 75. So how do you do that? So you just take the risk and whoever was the senior, senior citizen in my uh, team, we took extra care. We, you know, before planning the shoot, we planned where each one will sit. And after, uh, and we, uh, and we even rehearsed, like we say, set, uh, start sound, uh, roll camera, mask off, action, and then cut, not okay, wear the mask, you know, uh, or, or okay and wear the mask. Even this, we had to rehearse, you know, so it was not at all easy. Like, you know, casting was very, very difficult and yeah, I mean, and uh, see all the others had the luxury of working with actors and I was acting myself. It was so, so, so tough. I missed having an actor. I could have just got somebody else to act, you know, it would have been so easy for me, but there I was acting and, uh, uh, you know, Rajiv said that he had only a focus puller and uh, a light man. He had only a camera assistant inside because there were, there were four of us in front of camera. Mm. So I was the costume assistant, I was the set assistant, and I was like the makeup assistant. And uh, the glycerin, what do you do with the glycerin? You know, we can't cry like that just because it's pandemic, just because, you know, you're making an interesting film. People are not going to cry on sets for every shot and every take. The glycerin, using the glycerin was so tough. I tried getting four, you know, bottles of, smaller bottles of glycerin in town. I was not able to get it. And I tried, I tried so many things, puncturing some eye, eye, uh, you know, eyes, uh, eye drops or, you know, nasal drops. And then finally somebody gave me, you, you know, things which are so simple were so, so, so complicated. It's yeah, really it's, tough for the actors. It's really tough for the actors. Is it a coincidence that, um, that out, of, out of the five films, four of the films are actually, uh, you know, feature an, an older character quite prominently, actually. Um, is that purely a coincidence? I mean, it's a beautiful coincidence, I have to say. Out of the four films, only Karthik's film is is, uh, is about uh, sort of younger dudes, petty thief, and and, and another character. But uh, was that just a coincidence? Also, how how much of this was collaborative? You know, I, I see I see five incredible distinct voices on screen, and I'm curious to know whether there was any sort of discussion, um, whether there was any exchange of ideas going in. I mean, was there? So I was like, when Shalini called me and uh, when they were talking about the, this whole concept, uh, she told me, she just told me Gautam called in and he called dibs on uh, a grandmother, I mean a grandfather and a grandkid. And so I said, okay, uh, after two days I called her and I said, I'm calling dibs on a, a, a senior couple, like an older couple love story. And that's how I knew what the two of us were doing. But the others we didn't know, and there wasn't much of a collaboration in that sense because I think because of uh, uh, maybe because of the pandemic or what, and mm -hmm. I was shooting first because my actors had to go off somewhere. Uh, June nineteenth, I think uh, Jairam sir wasn't available to us, so I shot absolutely in the midst of section one forty four. 
I was the first one to shoot. I shot it in three days. And uh, actually, when I approached the cast, I wanted Jairam sir. And you've seen the film, so you know why I want Kalidas yeah. Jairam as well. Yeah. So I it's such Kali. a beautiful device. It's such a lovely, lovely device. Yeah. So I called Kali and I said, "Listen, Kali, I have a script." So Kali reads it immediately. He says, "Ma'am, I'm in. This is fantastic. I'm doing it." So I said, "Okay, I need your father." So he says, "Ma'am, I've written her that man may come or not come." <laughs> this is exactly what he said. He may come or not come, and he's scared of the OTT and everything. He's not very excited. But please take me. We'll do it. So I said, if he's not there, you're not there. You're not there. He's not there. Get him. So within half an hour, he calls back saying, okay, I made my father agree to the thing. That's how it happened. Urushi ma'am was easy. Actually, she's a very positive person, the most positive one. She says, Corona is not going to touch us. Let's just have precautions. And we had masks everywhere. We had every like one foot distance. I think we had those bottles. I think they're, they're, they're there in the frame as well. Right. So, but it was it was really difficult. Like Purnima, my costume designer, was the art art assistant. She was the production designer. My daughter was doing all kinds of things, and Kalidas was coaching his dad, and he was chauffeur to his dad because they were not allowed to come on the same day. So it, it, it was madness, but it was such sheer joy to be working in such a time. You know, it's it's also such a beautiful film. I mean, it was uh, it, it's it's really a film about 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 a fresh start, about second second chances. Uh, and and that device of of using, not going to give away, but but two actors to play two sets of characters is just was was beautifully done. Uh, also, I noticed there's a little tribute to uh, Alay Payude. Were you were you an assistant on that film, Sudha? Were you uh, not not on that film, but you assisted Mani? Yeah, uh, post Kanatil Muthumita. I came in at the time of writing subs for Kanatil, and right. I remember I had sent off a long mail about Kanatil. And uh, I hadn't said uh, uh, too many complimentary things, uh, uh, and then Manisha chose me. So I was like, I was sure he's going to not take me. So I said, okay, anyway, he's not going to take me. So let me just write whatever I felt, and then he took me on. Right. Yeah, I think what was the shoot like for you? Was it a hard shoot convincing the actors? I know you worked with uh, uh, Bobby, of course, before uh, you all did Jigar Tanda. So so there is a relationship already. But what was it like to actually? And, and you know, you have a fair bit of. portion that is outdoors also it's not just a very controlled set yeah like when they said about this anthology then uh, basically we were for when you were looking for okay what kind of script i should make and i had quite a few short film scripts which i wanted to make when i was doing nale yagna and didn't make so i just was uh, going through the script and i actually selected a, a sort of a uh, like a romance uh, story but then i got to know the names who were all there uh, who were all the other directors so Gautam sir, Rajiv sir. So, so I think I I felt okay. I I shouldn't be day touching romance because <laughs> romance or relationship. I I I felt okay. Like, let me go into what I I I get to do better, like a dark <laughs> uh, sort of a thing. So then that's when I went to this, and uh, uh, I mean this uh, this this particular film was actually. I mean I I said I mean this is inspired from a real incident. I mean that was there was a, a theft that happened in Bobby's office during the pandemic during the lockdown. so right. we were actually discussing about that and he was telling what happened in his office and all that and all and suddenly i got this idea okay let me base the script on a particular theft and then i i wrote it and then i said bobby to play and uh, uh, sharat and muttu kumar so they are all i mean very i mean they are all like good good friends and then they also felt very happy i mean it, it was not at all like because everybody was uh, uh, having that uh, Uh, urge to go and work because everybody was locked in home and also when i said we are going to shoot they just came to and uh, and also most of the part was like the interiors were shot in my office and the exterior uh, was shot outside my office and all that so it was not much of a trouble so we all enjoyed the shooting here you know i thought it's lovely that your film comes at the end it's the fifth film because uh, by, you know by the time that you are really choked up i think by the by the time that the, the rajiv's film and, and swasini's film is is over your you know it's it's you're quite overwhelmed with with emotion and then this one sort of delivers the laugh so it, it's it's nicely kind of uh, it's, it's nicely kind of slotted gautam uh, what was it for you gautam i mean it, again, it's such a beautiful relationship between grandparent and grandchild it's a story of confronting unresolved issues uh beautifully acted by 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 both the actors what was it like to shoot did you have problems getting a cast and crew on board uh, and and what was it like to actually shoot given the restrictions obviously no no problems at all casting in fact uh, <clears throat> both of them were really keen uh, we had to bring ritu in from hyderabad mm -hmm. and uh, the e pass and all that was worked out and she preferred to travel by car 
Uh, MS Bhaskar sir, um, you know, is always very keen. I think he was just uh, um, uh, very sure of the script and uh, he didn't want to do a reading and all. He just said, he said, I'll just come and we'll film it. And uh, of course, PC sir was there, you know, sort of yeah. setting it completely. Very minimal crew, uh, very minimal lights and all that. But um, we went for a couple, we went and checked a couple of locations. I think that's the only time we actually spent figuring out where we should film this. And then um, I brought him over to the office one day and then he said, this is where I'm shooting straight away. And then I had to sort of clear permissions from the entire street, you know, because sir said he'd like to shoot this here and we sort of made it happen. Yeah. And then uh, sort of removed everything and then propped it completely and all that. And uh, uh, like I said, it was a very, very uh, learning experience, like a masterclass, actually. You just uh, discuss the shots and then just sit back and watch them at work uh, for everybody, you know, the 10, 15 people that were on the sets. It was like a masterclass for all of us. Um, and uh, um, I know, uh, so as you talked about glycerine and all that, I think with both my actors, we didn't need to get that at all. Um, Baskers are just cries at the drop of a hat, literally. And um, uh, Ritu also, you know, once you sort of, uh, there's just one scene where both of them had to be in that zone. And um, I remember they pulled it off so, so easily and so well, you know, and we talked about it on the set. So, um, um, and then later also during post, I got the opportunity of working with Govind Vastanta, you know, on the music of this film. There is a song that sort of drives the film, uh, yeah. you know, and uh, we composed this a little earlier based on the script and all that. And then uh, recording also was done for the first time, you know, completely online, you know, the singer recorded from her house, Bombay Jishri Ma'am, and we were in a studio and all that. So that was also like a very, uh, very uh, new norm kind of an experience, uh, you know, and maybe that's the way it's going to be for also for some time. So uh, on the whole, it was a great experience being out there. Like I said earlier, and I mentioned this again, my only worry was to have my name alongside Rajiv sir, because I worked with him and um, uh, that was a problem, you know, seriously, that was a problem. and. Uh, Somehow I managed to get out of that. Yeah. It's such a beautiful, bittersweet film. And one of my favorite moments in the anthologies in your film where, again, without, I don't want to give away too much. It's really the grandfather uh, sort of imposing in that, in that uh, Zoom call that the granddaughter is having at the office. It's, it's just such a lovely moment. Uh, Rajiv, what was that like? I mean, your, your film is uh, it's called Reunion. It's got, it's got three actors. It's got Leela Sampson, who's just such a beautiful presence. And it's really a story about about accepting and non and not judging, isn't it? It's, it's about it's about how you include someone and and don't judge them for their behavior or or, or their lifestyle. Uh, what was that like to shoot? And and you've said that you were you were concerned about about Leela's health and and you know given that you were shooting in these circumstances. Also, it's shot in such a beautiful location. Yeah, I think um, there were two things driving me while I was writing uh, the the story is is that. You, you know, the pandemic, you all the time kept hearing about frontline workers, frontline workers. I mean, there are people who are putting their, uh, you know, health at risk to save you, which is doctors. And so I wanted somebody to represent uh, medicine. And, uh, and then if you have a person who's completely high risk, like an old lady who you have, who's your mother, which you have to do. And suddenly, because of the pandemic, all the domestic help, everybody's gone. And you think you've got a savior in, and but then everything sort of starts changing around. So um, then how do people react and how do, how, I mean, you can't tell people to get out, you know, you need to take care and you need to handle the issue and what the person you think can't take care is the person who's taking care and all this kind of, uh, uh, you know, aspects. But then when, when we are getting into the shoot, uh, because I have three actors and you have a shortage and I wanted to do live sound, and I'm working with Sikil, who is a Carnatic musician, but who's acting for the first time. Mm -hmm. So you can't really expect him to do takes after takes exactly the same way. So I, I was really sh shooting him the close-up and the long shot at the same time. So that itself means two cameras, one focus puller. So, you know, those kind of things were kind of interesting. I said, okay, now I'm going to shoot this. So if I'm going to shoot it, I got to make sure that I'm shooting it differently and it must be beautiful and it must be uh, something which you're trapped, but it must still look beautiful. How do you make a prison cell look beautiful? You know, uh, how do you make, it's the, you know, it's like an, uh, the opposite idea. So, um, so the, the cinematography on one side and the human story on the other side were, you know, really interesting. But once I put the script out, I was super enthusiastic. Leela Sampson and super enthusiastic Andrea and saying, wow, we like it. And and for I I didn't expect Sickle to be um, like 
let's try it out because he's putting his, his neck out a lot more yeah. than the others. But um, when we had a couple of, we had a reading session and after the reading session, it was necessary for me to know whether actually Sikhi can pull it off. Yeah. And then, uh, then it was all live sound. So it was, uh, it was, it was interesting. I, I really enjoyed the process because it was, and also I don't know what others are making. I didn't even know what the other story was. I was just had this one idea. I didn't have any other idea. I, I didn't know what to make. So uh, it was like, okay, let's see. Let's see how it happens. And, and, and the way I write stories, somehow the other music will come in. So it's like, so <laughs> there is an old melody coming back. And all that. Including, yes, including that nod to your own song, Ooh La 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 from Minasari Kanamu, which was such a lovely moment actually in the film. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, you, you kind of uh, connect back certain things in your life with certain tunes. So, Correct. you know, sort of yeah. celebrate doing that. So, so Asli, I want to I quickly come back and, you know, what was it like sort of working with family? I know you directed Anu, of course, before in Indira, but that was, you know, almost 25 years ago. I mean, this is the whole family. And of course, they are prof most of them are professional actors. So it's not like they're, they're non-professionals. But, but um, you know, can that get challenging as well when you're working with literally the, the whole gang? My, both my sisters are scared of me, so which makes it easier for me. <laughs> they call me Akka and they look up to me. Uh, to a certain extent, it makes it easier because they're very disciplined, both of them. Mm. Anu was actually my assistant director. Right. Uh, she said she'll take care of the dialogue part and she'll teach everybody the dialogue and she'll also take care of the scene numbers. The one person I was very scared of was uh, my editor, uh -huh. Prasad. So he's the senior most, you know, seven national awards, six or seven national awards. So I was, uh, I didn't want to look like an amateur, you know, when he sees the rushes, because due to pandemic, there are no assistant directors. So I rehearsed uh, or I started writing down shots for a whole week. So Mani said, I've never seen you work like this in your lifetime. Even for your, uh, you know, it was like, <laughs> you know, appearing for my 12th, you know, plus two exam. So I had, I done so much of homework, you know, when I went there, like I was like, my God, you know, I didn't have to do so much. For example, Shruti was in Bombay. Mm -hmm. Okay. She was in Bombay. So I didn't know if her portion was going to be shot in Bombay, but when we were deciding, she had come back to Hyderabad. So I had to find a cinematographer in Hyderabad and I thought I will virtually direct from here. That is what I thought. So I approached uh, my friend, Jen and uh, Vincent. Ajay and Vincent. So Ajay and said, you know, I want a cinematographer. So can you do it or do you want somebody, you want to suggest somebody younger because it's not a feature feature length film. So he said, I'll shoot it myself. And then uh, I and he said, let me take care of the whole thing. You just, let's have a couple of readings. So we had like a couple of days, we had the script reading and things like that. And then her portion was shot first. Uh -huh. Her portion was short first and our arts got delayed because, you know, our lockdown extended by another week for us. So originally I was supposed to shoot my portion and send uh, the portions to her so that she can react because, yeah. you know, you've seen the scene, so you know how it is. Yeah. But so happened, her, hers was done first and there was no going back because again, there was a lockdown in Hyderabad. Immediately after that, the cases went up. It was a lockdown. So that kind of problems I faced, but Shruti was, you know, working with me for the first time. She was so, so sweet, so obedient. And uh, the scenes that she did, we must have done it over Zoom at least a couple of times. And I was like there like a, like a demon, you know, sitting there, you know, getting it done with her. But she did completely something different on the sets, which was completely different from what I wanted her to do. But still, I think, I think, I, think I, I feel Shruti is going to be a revelation in this film. That's what I thought. I know everybody's seen how she acts. And of course, I, when I act and direct, I can't even judge how it is. And, uh, you know, Kata Di Ramamurthy, who's done a very good job. You know, he's a comedian, basically. Okay. But can you believe that he's a comedian? No, because he's got yeah. great dramatic scenes in this. Yeah. yeah, he looks like a very serious actor. You know, he looks like really serious. So, so he, I modeled the character on my father. Exactly how my father, like when I'm trying to say something, he says, shut. You know, so I wanted him to say that. You know, when somebody talks too much, he's a shut. So those kind of characterization I was able to get from a person who's doing who's more humorous than a serious person. So that's fine. Like I told you, being the elder sister worked. Correct. What about your mother? And and what's it like to? I mean, was it hard for her to? You know, your 
again, I don't want to give away too much, but to play a part where you're in the film throughout and, yeah. and yet you only really have that last bit. I mean, um, yeah. what was yeah. it like directing her? I mean, you were yeah. tough on her apparently. All of you, only Gautam has seen my other film, which I shot on my iPhone. She was the star in that film. Whereas here, she's just a character. She's Correct. just a character. She's like, everything is around her. but Around her. Uh, and I couldn't have gone for a, you know the story, I mean, you've yeah. seen it. I couldn't have gone for anybody uh, who's an established star here because for about three days, they will have absolutely nothing to do, you know. So it was so difficult. I, I did think of another actress called Sachu, who's like very well known. And also I had this issue, issue you know, my mother is very, very, not conservative, but she's very traditional. She agreed because my father was going to act as her husband. And then uh, after that, when I changed uh, the husband's role, I asked her, would you mind acting with another man? And she just looked at my father and said, why not? I said, there are close scenes. I said, there are romantic scenes. Uh, she looked at me and she said, I, um, oh, like I, I'll be very brotherly. You know, after 70, it's all brotherly love between man and woman. <laughs> so it's not really like... And woman, it's more brother, brother, sister. So I'll think of him like my brother. I said, no, no, you can't think of him like a brother. You have to think of him as a husband. She thought about it. And then she said, I don't have to discuss with anybody. I'm acting in a film. And very sweet. And every time, you know, we were very worried. In some scenes, we'll say like, because I was shooting like only three houses away from my house. So I would tell her like, you don't have work for another two, three hours. Would you want to go home and rest? She says, this is the best holiday I've ever had. I've never enjoyed life like this. So let me enjoy life. Why are you depriving me of my holiday? You know, and in the pandemic, I think she was the happiest. It's such a warm story of, of, of reconciliation, really, and, and of issues, again, family issues, sibling issues, parental child issues, very warm and, and, and very, very sort of moving. But, you know, I want to, um, I want to ask each of you, you haven't seen each other's films yet. Not yet. Are you curious? I mean, you all must know what they're about. Yeah. Yeah. Now absolutely. that you've seen all the films and you're saying it's looking good, <laughs> I think I have the courage to see all the other films. Don't you think so? Till then, I was so good. <laughs> you know, short films are, are usually the sort of entry point for young aspiring filmmakers, isn't it? That's what they kind of tend to use as their showreel to get the to get the feature film gig. And I know that all of you have, have directed short films. Gautam, you've directed three in the last couple of months, haven't you? Um, you know, yes. on some level, I mean, um, this is so encouraging to younger filmmakers or to aspiring filmmakers, isn't it? To see the sort of veterans, I mean, like, you know, yourself, kind of go back to the basics. Did this film, you know, listening to each of you, I have to ask, did this experience feel a little bit like film school? I mean, did it feel a little bit like sort of, you know, going back to the basics? For all of you? Completely like film school. Uh, at times when you have restrictions, like you can't sneeze, you can't uh, do this, you can't touch, you can't touch the camera, and you don't have, uh, at least in film school, I think something is given. Maybe lights are given. Here we had no lights. I shot in my cinematographer's house, and Niket would call me every day and say, ma'am, there's light here at the, on the stairs at this time. There's light in the kitchen at this time. So we're shooting the scenes like that. And exactly two days before shoot, it was cloudy and predicted cloudy for the next five days. So he caught hold of one lightman and because he can't be on set, the lightman put some Kalyana lights, you know, marriage lights for 200 bucks each. He tied them up in each window. And that's how we shot. I think film school, I was far more planned than this. It was crazy. For me, like, because I came from making short films, I was yeah. not, I didn't study any film uh, school or I was, I, I didn't assist anybody. So I came from short films. So actually I felt like I, I'm like, uh, like back to that uh, Nale Ekner days where uh, Nale Ekner is a contest where they will give a topic and uh, like uh, like seven or eight filmmakers need to make a film and uh, pretty much everybody will be making the same timeline. So it will be like more of a competition, right? I, I actually got that vibe uh, now and uh, now and we have all uh, like uh, great filmmakers like uh, along alongside you. So I, I used to inquire like what, what, I mean, what kind of film they are going to make and all. And uh, it, I felt like it was back to that, uh, like uh, that, that that competitive, competition, that competition yeah. mode, right? So I felt like, because I, I was actually in Madurai, I was, uh, uh, so when they said, okay, we well, need to shoot. And then I heard that Sudha ma'am already finished shooting. So I was like, oh, <laughs> I felt like in college, like you'll be the last one to do the assignment and yeah. coming back. Right? So, so <laughs> they have finished shooting. I have not even started the pre-production. Then I rushed to Chennai and then I was finding the location and all that. So it was very nice. I mean, it was back back like 10 years back what I was doing, yeah. 
and Swasini has it has it reignited uh, the love for you know filmmaking. You know, uh, like I might be senior to all of them, but when it comes to feature film, I'm the junior, some junior here because I have done a lot of short films. But when it comes to feature films, they're all masters and uh, they've proven to be very very successful and. Uh, you know, people just love their work, but I'm an amateur when it comes to feature films. But having said that, when it comes to short films, I started writing and directing with short films called uh, a series of short films called Pen, yes. which was quite liked by a lot of people. And after that, I made many short films. And I should tell you, before I shot uh, Coffee Anyone, we had actually in, in within us we had completed five other short films. So I mm -hmm. thought I was a master of short films. It's so easy to do. You know, and every film we wanted to do only 20 minutes and every film, even though I directed only one of them, the other four were directed by other people, but written by us, written by me and money. So every film finished in 22 minutes or 23 minutes. So we thought we mastered it. And here I go and I shoot and I come back with an edited length of 40 minutes, <laughs> you know, and when you shoot for 40 minutes and every scene is precious, which do you sure. throw away? So I felt so sheepish and stupid. I said, what the hell was I trying to do? Um, you know, I, I want to tell all of you, you know, when I was making pen, I had a top actor for every, uh, every, every, every story. For example, Jemini Ganesan was in one and Saukar Janaki was in another. Raghuvaran and Sharanya were in one film and Radhika was in one, Amala was in one, Ergal Rabi, you know, all the big stars uh, were there. Banu Priya was in one. Banu Priya was the one who actually fought with me and said, that what you're doing is just injustice. You've told me a fantastic story and you want me to get into the character on day one? How is it possible? In a feature film, the first day we just do some basic shots and then second day we get into the you know the mold of the character the third day is when we actually start performing and on third day you say it's over and you're asking me to go home you know so i don't know if you felt it with all your actors because she told me you know what you're doing is absolute injustice you know you're giving us such a short time to get into the character and you know reach uh, uh, the problem and find the solution you know so it, it is different short film is different i think for kartik and me it's, it's quite similar because we've done similar ones uh, mm -hmm. earlier in our careers. And Gautam, of course, now because of Queen, he's doing it. But the others have uh, just started doing it and they've perfected it. Because I meet Sudha, <laughs> Sudha said, what, ma'am? Why are you saying you should have just sent 40 minutes to Amazon? Why did you want to cut it into 25 minutes? I said, no, I'm a good student, Sudha. I'm, <laughs> I'm feeling so stupid. I Seriously, Raji, my, my, my edited was 40 and it was perfect, you know? Uh, I shot for four, four days and it was 40 minutes. Well, you have a very good editor because he's paid it down beautifully. And without losing wow. the moments, you know, wow. that dance at the staircase. I mean, if we had <laughs> lost that, I mean, it would have been a shame. <laughs> I know. No, they were not editors. It was edited by Mani and Shrika. Both were butchers. <laughs> they took away all my best scenes. <laughs> they took away all my best scenes. What to do? <laughs> but it was all well at the end. Thank you. Thank you to all of you. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you, Swasini. Thank you, Sudha. Thank you, Gautam. Thank you, Karthik. Beautiful film. I want to say to everyone that's watching this interview that Putham Pudu Kalei starts streaming on Amazon Prime Video from the 16th of October. Uh, it's a beautiful film and you know, you will, you will choke up, you will be emotionally overwhelmed and then Karthik's film comes along and makes you laugh. So really, uh, it's a really beautiful match. Uh, can't wait to see what you do next. All the best and thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank you.